Hello and welcome to Master Market. My name is Grady Arnell. I'm an Associate Director here at Duke Speaker School of Business, and I'm excited to have Chelsea Alford from MQM Class of 2021 with me today uh, to talk about her role at Alpha Route and uh, talk more about what her day-to-day -day looks like. So Chelsea, it'd be great to have an introduction from you. Um, my name's Chelsea. As Grady mentioned, I'm Class of 21. I was um, a strategy track um, concentration. And I started at Alpha Route outside of graduation in August of 2021. Um, I have been there ever since as a data analyst. Um, it's a great company. I love it. It's a very small startup. So it's a very unique culture um, that I'd love to dive in more about later in the interview. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you, Chelsea, for joining us. We're really excited to learn more about your role. So tell me about what you do as a uh, data analyst at Alpha Rep. So my role is um, I deal a lot with the front end of our projects. So I do a lot of data cleaning. Um, I It's my job to get the data from the client. So if there are any miss missing pieces, I am client facing in that way and um, have the client contact um, I'm in charge of any data questions we might have for them. Um, and so I start at the beginning of the project, do all the data cleaning, um, getting the data looking good for our algorithm so that our algorithm can read in our client's data, um, run an optimal solution. And then towards the end of the project, I jump back in and help with any sort of data visualizations or analysis that we might need in order to report our solutions to the client. So it sounds like you have multiple different things going on throughout your day. So is there one consistent day to day? What's your day to day looking like? Yeah, so typically um, a lot of my day will be independent work um, where I am coding mostly in Python, um, performing this data cleaning, um, contacting the client. Client meetings aren't super common, but they will like come up maybe once a week. Um, and then the collaboration within the team will come up anytime, like I have an issue, um, or I have some data that I don't know what to do with. Um, and so our team is very small, um, which I really like. And so typically in my day to day, if I have an issue, it doesn't look like putting time on someone's calendar, but I would get up from my desk and go ask whoever, um, I need to help me out. Um, and so that's where our collaboration comes in. So mostly my work is independent. It involves like me working at my desk and, and coding. But um, if I have any questions, um, I can put my head together with someone else on our team. Um, and that's pretty typical. I'll probably do that at least once a day um, where I reach out to someone to kind of problem solve. It's great to hear that there's collaboration in your role. So could you talk to us a little bit about what your um, what your office culture is like and how it compares to any of you, maybe your previous experience? Yeah, um, like I mentioned before, I'm at a really small startup. So the office culture, I think, is unique. Um, I really enjoy it, but we're a very small team, about like 12 people. Um, and so, like I said, anytime I have an issue, I can just kind of get up and go like, tap someone um, and say, hey, like, this is what I'm working with. Um, I really like that about it because even though, like I said, a lot of my work is independent in that way, it is super collaborative. Um, and really like, because we're so small, we were all like kind of friends, like, you know, everybody knows the other person and knows what's going on um, with their like work. And so it's not uncommon for someone to look at me and say, hey, it sounds like you've got a lot going on. Like, what can I do to help? Um, and I really appreciate that. Um, there's also like flexibility in the sense of I'm not always necessarily working a nine to five. It's not uncommon for people to roll up at the office at like 915 and then you might leave at 530 or six and like um, there's not necessarily an expectation for you to stay late or for you to come early um, but there's just this like understanding that you're going to be in the office doing your work for as long as you need to I guess. Um, we also eat like lunches together a lot which I really like um, so everyone will ping, Hey, I'm going to go eat lunch right now. And then we'll all go sit in the room together and usually bring our laptops and like half work, half eat, um, which I think is really fun. So we're just very close knit. 
That's great. That's great to hear. And that's typical for a startup. So it's exciting to hear that you're able to get involved with the startup. Was that something that you intended to do when you started it in the MCAM program or um, how did that happen? Yeah. So um, the short answer is no. I When I went into the MCAM program, I really wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do with it afterwards, um, after graduation. Um, I just knew it was like a great program and I was going to learn a lot. And then out of the program after graduation, when I was looking for jobs, I was kind of applying for anything I could get my hands on. Um, and I'm really glad like this opportunity for me worked out. So I found out about this company because they're so small, like I would have known nothing about Alpha Route. Um, but my CEO is a um, Duke alum. He did his MBA there. And so he reached out and posted the job listing for the data analyst position on like a Duke alumni LinkedIn page. Um, and I saw it and I thought that it was a really good alignment with like my background. So we do a lot of optimization and in undergrad, I studied applied mathematics. So I had this understanding of like what optimization is um, and I can understand the models like in a theoretical way. Um, and so I thought that made it like a really good fit for me within the company. Um, and so I started interviewing and thankfully they thought I was a good fit too. And so I ended up here, but startups were not necessarily on my radar. Um, and now that I'm here, I don't know if I could do big corporate again. You know, I've done internships before MQM in it and it's a lot more impersonal. Um, it's a lot more like, oh, you need to ask me a question. You've got to throw some time on my calendar. Like, and until then, figure it out on your own, you know? Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's how most companies work and it's organized and it, you know, it makes sense. Um, but I really do like the more personal nature of our office culture. Um, and everything's really fast paced. Um, I have like very direct, like hands-on impact on like the company's success and our revenue. Like if my project goes well, that's good for the entire company. And I'm seeing like my work affecting the entire company in that way. Um, so it's really nice. It's good to feel impactful. Um, but no, it was not an intentional, I needed to end up here. It was just kind of very lucky, I think. Yeah, absolutely. That's great to hear. So where's Alpha Route located? So we're right outside of Boston, Massachusetts. Um, so a little suburb called Waltham is where our office is. I live in Cambridge. So I have about a 30 minute commute, not too bad at all. Um, and that was another thing that like aligned really well about the job. I knew I wanted to move to Boston. I have a couple of friends up there, um, that I was excited to live with. And, um, that was another thing my boss was so excited about, like not only the MQM program, um, but I was like, oh, I love Boston. I want to move there. And he's grown up his whole life there. So he was like, I'm sold on you. Like, great. <laughs> That's great to hear. So you have, a, you've talked about what your day-to-day -day looks like, and there's a lot going on, a lot of different projects that you might be working on. So how do you manage those multiple priorities? That's a great question. Um, I typically try to, I typically work on multiple different projects in a day. Um, and what I'll try to do is spend a couple hours on one and then switch to another, just because I think trying to do like shorter time periods on one before switching, it kind of gets distracting you kind of lose your, your thread of what you're doing on a project. So I try to split it up like mornings and afternoons, typically like all morning, I might be on one project and all afternoon I might be on another. Um, another thing that I've learned since being in my position about prioritizing is it's always okay to like reach out and ask your superiors if you are prioritizing correctly. Um, it's something I learned the hard way where I was working primarily on one project and my boss came to me and said, how's this project doing? And I was like, I haven't done much for it. And he was like, no, this is a priority. So, um, I've gotten better about saying, Hey, I'm going to prioritize this and making sure that I get that confirmation, um, just so that I know that I'm working on the right things at the right time. And I'm understanding from like a company level, what our priorities really are. Um, and I think you could do this at any company. It's easier at a startup because I do talk to the CEO on a daily basis, which I think is uncommon for someone in my level of position. Um, but I think it's definitely something you could do at a bigger company. Just ask your manager like, hey, 
Um, this is my list one, two, three. Does that look okay to you? Um, and so that's something that I've learned and gotten better at, um, but not something necessarily that I knew like coming out of MQM, like I thought I had it all up here and I was ready to go, but um, it's always good to, to confirm with your superiors just to make sure that what you're doing is what you need to be doing. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's one thing that's always a challenge coming right out of the MQM program or any program really is going from having a set syllabus where you're like, I know what the set curriculum is going to be. I know what the priorities are, and this is going to make sense if I do it in this manner. But there's no there's no curriculum. There's no syllabus to refer to when you enter your first job. So that can definitely exactly. be a challenge. And priorities change. You know, I might have like this project A is, is number one, and I need to focus on that. And then project B's client will reach out and be like, can we accelerate the timeline? And my boss, who's super accommodating, says yes. And I'm like, oh, okay. So they switch. Um, so it's it's nice. And that's another part of like the startup culture. It's just so fast paced. So it keeps you on your toes. Yeah, that's great to hear. So you mentioned that you didn't know that this was going to be the route that you took right out of MQM, but you're really happy that you've done uh, working for a startup, working for Alpha Route. So what is your future looking like? What do you think you'll do in the future? So being at a startup in this way is also unique. I know that um, people of my generation tend to skip around jobs a lot. You know, you'll be at a job for a year or two, maybe three, and then you'll find something new. Um, because we're so small and because I joined when we were so small, I really am invested in the company's growth. So I would like to stick around and kind of see where we go um, and then probably would try to find a different position within um, or outside of the company, like after we like made it big, you know, like I just kind of want to see um, the company succeed. Um, but within the company, I think when we get big enough, I would be aiming for like a managerial role. Um, so as a data analyst in Alpha Route, I was the first one hired. So every data analyst we've hired under us, I have trained and I have kind of informally managed um, just because I was the other person who knew the job. Um, and so I've really enjoyed that part of my job. I've enjoyed answering questions and training people like new hires. Um, and so I think if we became big enough for there to be a managerial position, like within the data analyst, um, like field of our company, I would love to get involved in that. But again, it's it's interesting because we're so small, we don't have that role now. So it's not like I'm gunning for someone else's job. It's kind of I'm dreaming of this job being created in the future. Absolutely. That's great to hear. And what would be one piece of advice you mentioned that you're you were really targeting the Boston area when you're looking for jobs? What would be one piece of advice to someone that is looking for one specific location uh, mm -hmm. for their first career out of the MPM program? I would really say that. I think it can be difficult to get a job like outside of where you are currently located just because um, people look at your resume and they see, you know, Durham, North Carolina, and they're like, they're not here. Why would we hire them? Um, especially if you're not looking at remote positions. So what I would say is apply to everything. Um, like if I saw Boston on a job listing, I was applying for it. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily like try to be picky because as if you can get your foot in the door, then if you don't like the position you end up in, you could always apply to something else once you're living there. And I think it would be easier. You could meet people in person. Um, you know, you could tour the office and get a better idea of what you're getting into. Um, and so I would encourage people to just apply to everything that aligns, of course, with what you're wanting to do. Um, I was applying for any data analyst position that I saw. Um, and then you can always like pivot if you need to. And that's, I think, easier to do once you're physically there in the location that you want to be. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Thank you so much, Chelsea. It was really great to talk to you uh, and hear what you've been up to since graduating MQM uh, and appreciate your time today. Awesome. Thank you, Grady.